I'm Ethan Kwan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a scrolling platformer in Scratch. Now, have you seen those scrolling platformer games on Scratch before? They are very popular, and today I want to show you how to make one of those. Okay, so I have a new Scratch project here up and running, and I want to show you how to make one of these from Scratch in Scratch, which is interesting. <laughs> okay, so first so here's my new scratch project first we are going to be starting off by making our player character so this is this is probably the most important part so in, instead of painting a new sprite i'm just going to reuse sprite one aka scratch cat so i'm going to rename this to player and in this example we don't really want scratch cat so i'm going to drag in a costume from my backpack as you can see i have a costume ready right here and this costume is one of the costumes that I used for one of my other <laughs> scrolling tutorials. So I'm going to go ahead and delete costume 1 and costume 2, and I'm going to rename costume 3, player. Alright, and next what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sprite. Actually, first of all, since my player character is a bit small, I'm going to size up my player to be about mm, 300%. Yes, that's much better. Okay. Now we now we are going to create a new sprite, so paint a new sprite, and we are now going to design our level. So you can do this however you want, you can color it however you want, just make sure that it, it is playable, and make sure that the zero zero dot, the zero zero crosshair is not in a wall. So don't do this, for example, because that means our player will spawn inside of a wall, and we don't want that, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and design a very basic basic level so we can test our project out. Now, this is a very good idea to have. First, uh, the very good idea to create a, your own level for testing. So we want to test gravity, slope detection, wall collision, and head collision. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a wall, we're going to make a floating platform, and we're going to make a slope like this. And this is what you should normally do when you're first testing out a platformer because it's very useful to have this kind of template. So first thing I notice is in my project, this, this sprite is not centered. Actually, first of all, I'm going to rename the sprite to level. All right. So first thing I notice is this sprite is not centered. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the code tab, grab a when green flag clicked, and... Actually, instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the sprite editor and we're just going to put 0, 0 into this, in, into this part here, whatever it's called. All right, so now let's get coding. So let's get on with the tutorial. So let's go to our player sprite and let's go ahead and make some code. So to make this code, we're going to need a few variables. We're going to need a few global variables and a few private variables. And if you don't know what that means, Global means for all sprites, private means for this sprite only. And this will be important later. So first of all, delete the my variable, so we don't because we don't need that. And we're gonna create a new variable calling it level. And I'm gonna make this all sprite all, all caps and and I'm gonna signify all caps meaning for all sprites. So level in all caps for all sprites. Click OK. Also we're gonna create a new variable scroll. Scroll X for all sprites, and scroll Y also for all sprites. So now we have three variables, level, th scroll X, and scroll Y. We're going to need the scroll X, scroll Y variables, so hide the, level, hide the level variable, but keep the scroll X, scroll Y variables. Okay, now we're going to need two more variables. We're going to need a, a X variable, and make sure this is for this sprite only. That's very important. And click OK. And then we're going to create another variable, y, and make sure this is also for this sprite only. OK, so now we can click OK, and now we have these variables here. OK, I'm going to just put them like this, and yeah, OK. So now we have our variable set up. We are going to set up our game. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're, let's go to our events. And let's grab a green flag clicked, as we usually do with with most games in Scratch. We always start with a green flag clicked. Okay, 
So first of all, this green flag clicked. This is not very much control over my game. I want for a scrolling platformer, it's good to have a bit more broadcast and a bit more control over something. So I'm going to create my own broadcast um, start start um, project. I could call it green flag, but start project. I'll know it makes more sense to me. I don't know. You can call it green flag or whatever you like. And make sure this is a broadcast start project and wait. That's very important. Okay, so broadcast start project and wait. And then we're going to broadcast another message calling it um, play. All right, and click OK. Make sure this is also a broadcast and wait. Okay, so when I receive or start project, um, we're going to hide. So we start off by hiding our, our sprite, and then we're also going to go to the front layer. That's very important. Don't forget that. So go to front layer, and then hide. Okay, and when we receive play, so grab another when I receive. When I receive play, so when I receive play, we're going to first set up our variables. So we're going to set level to 1, and oh, not, mes not message 1, play. And we are also going to set our scroll... Actually, no, let's not do that. We're going to create another broadcast for setting up our scripts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a game loop. So what we're going to do is we are going to create another another broadcast. And actually, first of all, wrap, wrap these around forever loop. So underneath, click set level to one. Forever. So so we don't have to like broadcast play again or something like that if we want to respawn. So we're just going to go forever respawning, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense later. Um, so forever broadcast, and we're going to create a new message, and we're going to reset the game in this one. So it makes sense to call it reset. Okay, and click OK. And make sure this is, again, a broadcast reset and wait. That's, that's really important. Okay, broadcast reset and wait. After that, after resetting, what do we do? We want to set up the game, right? So we're going to broadcast another message, uh, setup. Nope, I'm not typing. Setup. All right, and click OK. And make sure these are all when it broadcast setup and wait. That's important, again. OK. So now we are broadcasting reset and setup. OK, so let's go ahead and create a a custom block. Now these custom blocks are very useful. So go to my blocks. These custom blocks are very useful because they can split up your code into small sections. So we're going to create a new block and we can call it maybe um, start game, right? So we're going to start the game in this. We're, gonna, we're basically going to set up all our variables in this game, in this start game block and click run without screen refresh. Click OK. All right, so now we have a start game block, and we're going to use it immediately underneath the broadcast setup and wait. So we are going to put inside the start game, we're going to reset our variables. So we're going to go ahead and set scroll x to 0, set scroll y to 0, and we're also going to set x and y to 0. So that's just setting up everything. And yeah, okay. Now we're going to use a repeat until. Now this is a cool little trick. So go to control, grab a repeat until. And we are not going to specify our condition. So that means that this is going to run basically forever. This is basically a forever loop if you don't put anything in the repeat until. It's basically repeating until nothing. So that means just repeat forever. So this is like a forever loop until we put something in that repeat until. So we're just going to keep that empty for now. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and create another block wh where we're gonna hold most of our scripts and movement. So, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and create a new block and let's call it um, frame. So this will be each frame. This will be called and make sure to click run without screen refresh. That's very important. And actually, no, for now, leave the run without screen refresh unticked. We might come back to that later. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and click OK. Okay. And inside frame, we're just going to go ahead and we are going to actually, first of all, put frame into the repeat until. Yes, that's very important. Okay. So let's set up our movement scripts. 
So, uh, so let's first set up our left and right scripts. So, um, this is, we could use ifs, but that's very inefficient and not very neat. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a small little trick that, that you might know. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just change, um, change x by, and we're going to change it by grab a minus, and we're actually going to grab a multiply as well. So multiply and a minus, and stick the minus inside the multiply. Okay, so you might know this trick. You can actually, so we're going to go to sensing, and let's see, so we're going to grab a key space press, and we're going to change this to right arrow. Now, if you click this block, it will say false if you're not pressing the right arrow. It will say true if you are pressing the right arrow, as you can see right here. However, if you stick this into an operator, let's say we stick this into a plus, right? We can actually stick these into the plus, and this will actually be converted into a number. So this will be zero if you 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 are not pressing this button. Uh, sorry, if you're not pressing this key, and it'll be one if you are. Um, it'll be one if you are, as you can see here. So this is very useful because now we can use these in math operators. So what we can do is we're going to actually grab a key, another one. We're going to grab a key left arrow pressed, and we're going to stick this key right arrow pressed in the left, and key, stick the key left arrow pressed in the left of this subtract block. And we're going to multiply this by 8. So now what will this do? This will, uh, it, let's just click this. It'll say 0 if we're not pressing any keys. It will say, if we're pressing the right arrow, where it will say 8, because key right arrow minus key left arrow, since 1 minus 0 is 1, times 8 is 8. And if we're pressing the left arrow, it will say negative 8. So this is a very useful trick, because this will basically do all our movement scripts for us. So that's very useful. Okay, so that's all in the frame. Um, we're going to create another block. We're going to call it position. Position. And... Okay, so just click Run Without Screen Refresh. Okay. And we're going to stick this position block right underneath the frame block. And inside position, this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go to Motion, and we're going to go to X, and go to XY, and inside the XY, we're going to go ahead and go to uh, grab a subtract, put that in there. We're going to go ahead and put X, go to X, X minus scroll X, duplicate that, Y, Y minus scroll y. Now this will basically simulate movement, so that's very useful. So um, so let's try this actually. Let's go ahead and test this, and I am not seeing the... oh, it's, it's not shown. Um, right, so inside start game, let's make sure to show the player. Um, yes, okay, there we go. Okay, so now we can see the player. And, yeah, okay, so now we can move left and right. There's this white border around my player, so let me just fix that. So now we, so now we got rid of the white border around my player. Um, so, now, what we're going to do is, as you can see, our left and right scripts are working fine. Now, of course, if you wanted to add a bit more better physics, you could by just creating a new variable, x speed, or something like that, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but what I am going to do is, as you can see, this is not a scrolling game. This is just normal movement. So what was the point of these scroll x, scroll y variables? Well, let's go ahead and change the scroll x variable into a slider. And what happens when we, when we scroll this slider? Well, as you can see, the player moves. So this means we're moving the camera around. But this is not very effective if we can't see the... Um, if we can't see the level scrolling around as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and into the level, and when I receive, when I receive a setup project, or sorry, start project, we are going to go ahead and we're going to show. So that, well, yes, we're just going to set up, so we're just going to show. So we are going to go ahead and create a new broadcast. Um, actually, instead of a broadcast, we're going to use a broadcast and wait, and we're going to create a new message called frame. Or tick, I guess. Tick. Yes. So tick is like every frame we're going to run this block. So click OK. And then put this tick underneath the position block. And inside level, we are going to inside when the run I receive tick, we are going to go ahead and position our 
our level. So this is actually pretty easy. We're going to go to a player, and we're going to grab our position block. Okay, so this is great, but we don't have x and y variables set for our, our level sprite. So what will this look like? Well, this is actually pretty easy. As you can see, Scratch has kindly created our our these variables for us. And as you can see, these are the level x and level y variables. Actually, we don't we're never gonna set these. These are gonna be a zero always, so you can actually go ahead and delete these, and we can just replace these with zeros. Okay. So if what what happens when we test this now? Actually, first of all, we have to um we have to put this position block inside the tech block. But Okay, so now what happens? Well, it looks exactly the same, but what happens when we change the scroll x variable? Okay, so now, as you can see, the level moves with the player, which is great, and that's exactly what we want. So, that's really good, because now we have the foundations for a really nice scrolling game. Um, okay, so, how do we make the level scroll along with the player. Well, this is actually also pretty easy. This is a pretty easy thing to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just set scroll x to our x position like this. And stick this um above the position block. Okay. So now what happens? Let's see. Oh yes. Okay, that's perfect. Now the level scrolls along with our player, which is very nice. But it's kind of choppy, as you can see. It's kind of like, if I start moving and then stop, the screen stops. And for scrolling games, that's not very good, because some people will get nauseous or like kind of like dizzy. Um, because you're jittering around so much. So, we're going to add smooth scrolling. So, we're going to go ahead and use a change instead of a set. And we're going to go ahead and change scroll x by, and we need a division. And we need a... Actually, we can just duplicate this from the position, x minus scroll x. Okay, so we're going to stick this x minus scroll x in the left. And what what are we going to put on the right? Well, on the right, we want how much smoothing we want. So if you want a very kind of choppy game, you can set this to a low number, like 1 or 2. Now, 1 will be exactly the same as what's now, so you don't really need this. But if you do it to 2, it won't be that smooth, but it will still be a bit smooth. So, a higher number will be much smoother. If you set it to, like, 100, that might be a little bit overkill, but if you set it to 100, it will be very, very smooth. You can try it if you want. But I'm going to set it to a moderate, reasonable value, 10, which is probably a good value. Okay, so I'm going to stick this above the position block. And now, as you can see, we are smooth scrolling. So now, the, the camera lags a bit behind on the... Uh, for the player. So that's much better because if I click left and right really quickly, it won't I won't get dizzy, which is very nice. Okay, and that's usually used for why, but we'll get there when we get there. Um okay, so now we are going to add up and down scrolling because that's also moderately important. Wait, how much time do I have? We are at 19 minutes of recording. So I am going to have to pause this tutorial for now. I will upload probably the next one tomorrow or something. But yes, so that that's the end of episode one. In part two, we will cover how to make our player move up and down, add jumping, add gravity. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, share this channel with others. And if you didn't like it, you can click the un unlike button, whatever it's called. Okay, thank you for watching. See you at howtodosomething.com, and see you next time. Bye.